magnetic island is, um, as we all know, and all the people who live here, it's a wonderful island. It's very special. One of the reasons that I'm here with my family is because it's a, a little Great Barrier Reef island just offshore. It has a natural coral reef. It may be an inshore reef, but it's a special reef and it's alive. And it has services from town. How lucky are we? It's a place where the community has comes together. It's a little bit more like an outback town in that sense. So we're very lucky to be on this place. It has natural beauty, beautiful walks, wildlife, and the marine side. So that's what's drawn me here to Magnetic Island. It's magnetized me like it's magnetized a lot of people. My origins are from the Midwest in the USA. I was born in Illinois in the 1949, part of the baby boom, and I had two other brothers. I was in the middle. My parents were mainly Swedish background. It was like the tropics there in the summertime, and you could hear corn grow on a still night. You could hear the leaves go between each other. But winter time was too cold, so I dreamt about the tropics. And I left there in about 1969, and I went out to Northern California in the Redwoods to finish my first degree um, in marine biology and oceanography minor. And I did diving there as well for abalone, other things. But you know, the water was cold, took a thick wetsuit. I was still dreaming about the tropics. So, I ended up in 1973 going to Tonga, to the Kingdom of Tonga in the South Pacific. My first time to go down there, I flew in a plane in March from kind of northern winter, the end of winter, into Samoa and opened the door of the airplane got smashed with this just heavy humidity. It was like you could cut it with a knife. And I've never really felt it again quite the same way, but I've become adopted to the tropics. I spent three and a half years in Tonga working in fisheries, uh, worked with oysters, I worked with um, turtle nesting surveys. And when I was on one of the little uninhabited islands in Tonga, I saw my first giant clam and I was just amazed. It was so big, um, I couldn't believe it. I was eating smaller species of giant clams with the Tongans, but this clam was just amazing and it still affects me today. Tonga was a very interesting place to be. Um, Polynesian people are very easy to get along with. And it was a wonderful place to live for a while and work. Uh, but I went on to the Solomon Islands um, after that 76 to 78. Um, worked in fisheries and it was with Melanesian people. And they're quite different too. They're lovely people too. Uh, it's really an really a, a different experience again and I was a fisheries officer in the eastern Solomons in Makira or San Cristobal Island. I set up a fish market and uh, went around and started um, collecting lobster, live lobster um, for people and we would purchase those for the people and then send them on to markets. But we were also collecting data on how much we're collecting, what we're bringing out, so they really could understand what was going on. 
We're not just a fisheries company taking away. And that was a great experience in the Solomons. But you know, I felt like I needed to have more education. So I went to Guam to do my master's. After Guam, it was the decision to sort of be either in Micronesia, between there and Hawaii, or coming to Australia. And I decided to come to Australia. I began to do my PhD through the University of New South Wales. My PhD was on giant clam recruitment and early life history and the reproduction of these animals. That um, I started up my PhD work here, um, doing some of the work at Lizard Island Research Station. But then a big cyclone came, Cyclone Winifred, in uh, February 1st, 1986. Um, I still had some little larval clams that survived it, and those clams are the ones I have today here on Magnetic Island. When I finished the clam project in 92, I went to Indonesia to work as a consultant with an Asian Development Bank project. And it worked with six universities, and the first university I went to was one where my wife was teaching. I met her there, um, Cornelia or Nell Braley. She was actually teaching fisheries there. Now, probably everyone on the island knows that she cooks Indonesian food, so she's given away all of her nice marine biology. Not really, she still understands what's going on. We got married by the government on the beach with our, both our Christian and Muslim friends, and so it was a special time. And then about a year later, who's born? Fia, our daughter. That was very special. Um, she was born in South Sulawesi, um, Indonesia, and she was a big, lovely baby, and she's grown up with us, and we love her so much. Indonesia was maybe three years working there at some different universities. We had a lot going on. We produced a, a world record of giant clam um, seed from one individual. I think it was two and a half million um, seed at two months old. After the Indonesia experience, we came back here to Magnetic Island and we built the house. Our house is an interesting one. It has a central breezeway and a high ceiling, so it's quite cool in the in the summertime and um, maybe a bit cold in the winter but uh, for a cyclone it works fairly well too because there's nothing shut up it's not lifting the roof the wind can go through so what I did was um, on part of the property which is on goes through Gustav Creek on the other side of the creek I can keep my aquarium small aquarium but it's a specialist kind of aquarium because there are some giant clams put in it which I have reared from eggs during my PhD thesis. These clams are 28 years old. They're quite a big animal now. They're about 100 kilos in weight and they're solar animals so you don't feed them. We like people to enjoy um, and see what's in the water around here. Whenever someone comes to an island, they always want to see something that's in the ocean.
work overseas was from 2004 to 2006 in Indonesia, Eastern Indonesia. I was working at a very big pearl farm, silver lip pearl farm. We had over 800,000 oysters on the long lines. I was one of the managers there. I was in charge of making sure what was happening to all those oysters at the end of each month and had to keep a record on it. Um, it was a, it was an interesting, wonderful experience, but it was too far away from home. What I've been doing now is I have been working mainly volunteering, helping with tourism operators and businesses Magnetic Island, setting up two snorkel trails in 2012, in Nelly Bay and in Jeffrey Bay. And last year in 2013, we moved 14 of my culture giant clams into the trails. And that's an extra special thing for people to see. I wanted people to be able to see them the way they look natural when they clump out in, in, in nature. And I've also done some work with the, with the museum over in Picnic Bay, helping with interviews of fishermen, divers, marine scientists, on what they see the difference in the past and now, and recording that and keeping it in the museum. And I'm also doing some work with the Julen Marine Aboriginal Corporation. There's two Aboriginal families from different tribes, the Butler family and the Johnson family from here on the island, and plus a few of us non-Aboriginals that are technical members. And we hope to set up a small scale to medium-sized hatchery that we can produce seed that can be grown out in the Palm Island. So this brings the Palm Island people into it. They have a farming ability to do there and empowers them to uh, start off and, and do their own thing and produce some of the food that they used to eat naturally. So meanwhile, while we're waiting for these things to happen, Nell and I are just happy to live here on Magnetic Island.